started. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Tuesday Notary Titans for Tuesday, October 6th. It's my first day back in a long time, and I have missed you guys. So glad to be here. Sorry it's from the back of a car, but I really do have a full little setup here. So uh, excited to uh, get to some questions, share some big wins. Uh, uh, our co-host, of course, is Carol Ray from Notary to Pro. Carol, I see you have a little bit of a uh, wonky internet as well, but we'll take you for whatever you can, we can get from you today. Now, you had mentioned that you have some exciting news that you'd like to share. Do you want to do that right now? Oh, sure. I guess I do. I'm busy admitting people. Well, there's a lot of people coming in here. I'll, I'll um, take over that. So I just you, keep you collecting or doing on. admit all. I guess that's right. Okay. Well, th this morning was exciting because I got two emails. One saying that our escrow on our purchase is going to close November the, uh, I mean, October the 19th. And at the same time, I got an email, uh, uh, and it's going to be um, cash oh, offer, 45-day close, however, contingent on them selling their house, but we've been told by their realtor that it, that shouldn't be more than two to three weeks, because it's in a really nice, quiet, country-type area in this uh, Northern California, and I guess people are gobbling up the homes away from the city. So, awesome. so that was exciting. Yeah. And uh, let's see. I had something else that I was going to say, but I'll, so I'll wait. I'll save it for later. So that's my exciting news. And All we're right. happy to see you back here. Hope that everything's makes... gone well the way you wanted. Uh, yeah, it really has. It's been great. Thank you. Uh, but wow, what a huge break. I think that's the biggest break from TNT I've had since we got this started. So I think we started going through withdrawal after week two. So let's, um, Laura's going to be just a few minutes late. She'll be on here in just a minute. We'll get into that. A couple of things I wanted to share with you guys. Obviously you've seen that Zoom has changed their security settings again, which I think serves us all in the grand scheme of things, but it's going to mean that I'm going to have to change the link to Zoom because we obviously can't spend all of our time admitting people to every meeting. So that I just have to create a more secure link. That means starting next week, we will not be using the same TNT link. So I'm going to send that out and I'm going to send it out a lot. So sorry if it gets a little annoying, but we've got thousands of people that receive those emails and those invites to join us. So we're going to make sure that you uh, get the fresh new one. And if you have taken our advice and you have a regularly scheduled appointment on Tuesdays to catch us, change that link in your appointment. So you can um, definitely not miss out on anything here. Um, I think that's it for the announcements. As far as me, I'm super excited because this um, experimental little four week road trip slash vacation slash uh, super intense project went super well. I'm so uh, refreshed and energized and uh, this was a super productive time for me as well. And uh, really what it was is putting the final touches and really wrapping up the uh, second book that I've written with uh, co-author Sandra Long. Uh, that's going to be coming out on Notary Public Day, November 7th, so I'll have more information for you. The launch team, thank you to you guys. Thank you to everybody in our audience. Uh, it filled up within, really within 13 hours, but within 24 hours, we had way more seats than I even expected for that launch team on the new book. So if you want to still get updates on just the new releases and things like that, you can go to notarycoach.com forward slash book launch. I'm sorry, launch team, notarycoach.com forward slash launch team, and you'll be the first to know as those, uh, that book is coming out. Uh, so now, without further ado, guys, we're five minutes in, and this time is just for you, so we really want to jump in and start answering some questions, and hopefully uh, Laura will be right here with us to, uh, to join us. So you know how this works. If you have a question, please raise your hand 
don't know how to raise your hand, you're just going to click on participants. If, if you hover over, uh, it looks like it's gonna be Carol's face right now. If you hover over Carol's face, a little toolbar will open up, you click participants, you'll see your name over on the right, select more and you can select raise your hand. It might even actually be easier than that now because they keep changing things. So just raise your hand and we will do our best to get to you. Okay, first hand I see up, I see Miles. Miles, thank you so much for being here. Remember to tell us what state you're from and ask us your question. Hey, how's it going, Bill? How's it going, Carol? Uh, my name is Miles, coming out of California. And my question is more directed towards you, Bill. I believe I heard you say in the past that you recommend all California notaries do general notary work because you know of some who are making two to 300 plus a signing. And I wanted to ask uh, which types of loan documents can command that level of, uh, of a fee? Okay, great question. Let's do some clarifying first before I answer. So yes, loan signing agents in California command a pretty nice fee depending on where you are in California. It's also highly competitive. So you'll find that some markets like down in Los Angeles um, might not pay top premium because there are a lot of loan signing agents. That doesn't mean they, the top paying jobs don't exist. Uh, we see it every day where escrow officers, especially if you're gonna go escrow direct, if you're ready for that, uh, they still pay upwards of $200 per signing. Signing companies, you're gonna get a fraction of that. The other thing I wanna clarify is general notary work is not loan signings. It's, you know, it's what we call now specialty notary work, thanks to Laura. And in California, you, uh, the notaries have the highest fees, statutory fees in the country at $15 per notarial act, plus you get some flexibility to charge additional fees for convenience, travel, and things like that. So the high, most highly profitable of those tend to be estate planning appointments. So we're, what we're talking about is living trusts that often include the last will and testament, powers of attorney, and documents like that. Those are the appointments where several notaries, maybe even on this call today, uh, they've opted to switch from loan signings to specializing in those types of appointments because they can be quite lucrative, especially if you have taken the steps to get specifically trained in it and you grow relationships with estate planning attorneys to get those appointments. You can bring tremendous value to those relationships. Does that answer your question? Yeah, it does. Uh, am I allowed to ask one more? Yeah, let's do it. Oh yeah, yeah. And my second question I had um, was about like during a signing, if you have, so for instance, last night I had a signing appointment. It was a seller, doc, seller package where it was about 60 pages. And I, I expected it to be done uh, within an hour tops, but I, I had a signer who, uh, and this is the first time I experienced this, she, she wanted to read every word on every page. And the signing ended up going almost two hours. And I, I wanna know if you had any strategies as far as, um, you know, not being rude, but I, I kind of made it clear that I had another appointment coming up, but that didn't really help as far as slowing her down uh, or speeding her up, I should say. Um, so just like any, any tips or advice if you're in that kind of situation. Yeah, that's a really um, great question. And I'd love to see the chat just completely blow up with some of the suggestions here. And on, on this level, real quick, Miles, I'm just gonna kind of do a, a sidestep. Guys, something I just learned, maybe we could do it the whole time, maybe it's new to Zoom, but you can save the chat. Some of the most valuable part of these uh, TNT calls are what happens in the chat. And if you open up your chat in the lower right hand corner, there's a little three button tab. You can click that and hit save chat and that will save it for you so you can hang on to that. Uh, I would recommend waiting to the end of the call. Okay, so Miles, now maybe you'll get some additional uh, information from somebody in the audience too. Here's what I find. It is the um, absolute right of the signer to take as much time as they they want to read those documents. There are ways that we can we can word it. There are ways that you can maybe work around it, in, especially when you're doing your confirmation. Uh, a 
lot of notaries are a little more proactive. They're like, have you had a chance to review these documents or do you anticipate reading these documents at the appointment? Um, I've never done that. What I do is I build in a two to three hour window before appointment, so I rarely have to worry about this. So it's very, very rare that it actually does happen. It's also pretty rare to get readers on your document packages, especially on the seller. But what I'll also say is this is exactly why I do not take discounted fees for a seller package. I charge $125 for a seller package because sometimes they're super fast. You're in and out in 15 minutes. But other times they get a different kind of um, settlement statement that really highlights. And sometimes they did, they're paying for things they didn't agree to pay for and they can take a little bit longer. Carol, I would love to hear your suggestions on this too. Do you have any extra feedback for Miles on how to handle? Well, I uh, I've actually learned I learn a lot from my graduates. I learn a lot over the years from them. Uh, and it says my internet stable. Can you hear me? Yes, I yes, can. Yeah. Unstable. Can you hear me? Okay. Uh, we did a video. I did a video recently with one of my graduates, and what she has done, she's doing between six and 10 signings a day, six days a week, making an unbelievable amount of money, okay? What she does is she sets herself up when she's confirming the appointments. And in, in an area I never even thought about when I was setting them up, I did the usual, you know, the address, any distinctive things about your home, all that kind of thing, you know, setting up the basics. She goes into detail finding out if they have their closing disclosure, if there's anything on there that they wanna to talk to their loan officer about before she gets there. She goes through this whole thing and, and she's able to avoid, she never has readers. She says she walks into these signings and she's, and even in California, filling out the journal, doing everything properly and legally, she's in and out of there always in under an hour, which is pretty remarkable here because of what we have to do with our journal. So that's the only thing I really have to add. I've, we've had readers over the years and I never did figure out a rep because they are entitled to that time, you're right. And we never did book them so close together that we didn't allow for that extra time. So I don't know if that helps or not. <laughs> yeah, it does, thanks. Thanks, great questions, Miles. Thank you so much for bringing it up. I've got right. one quick comment about that, if I could. Sure, um, Marcia. Hi, Marcia Finley, uh, Marcia Finley here in Kentucky. I just got a call from National Link LP, Loan Processing, and I've, I almost fell off my chair because the gal said this is going to be extremely quick, one hour before the appointment. We always have the closing agent call and ask them if they have any questions on their closing documents. And I've never heard of any such thing. So um, apparently they've had some trouble in the past and they're going to be calling first. So setting up the appointment was super easy and I'm gonna allow some time to shop at Walmart on my way back, that's all. <laughs> nice. So that's National I Link love LP. Love it, thank you for sharing that. And I love when companies are proactive in their customer service like that. Excellent, thank you. All right, let's uh, jump over to Linda Adams from Tennessee. Linda, how's it going? Don't forget to unmute. There, now everybody can hear me. Um, I'll make it quick and I don't, I'm not looking for a lot of answers from everyone on screen in real time. I'll take them in the chat because this may turn into to be more of a long stretched out thing than we have time for today. Um, I'm here in Oak Ridge, took a signing on August the 20th. This is regarding PayPal and resolving disputes with PayPal took an assignment from, via phone call on August the 21st, a Friday. They were needing someone to go to their client's home, uh, get a notarization on two documents, return the entire packet that had been FedExed to their client, send it, push it on its way on FedEx for a Saturday delivery. Um, they didn't, I'm not set up to accept credit cards. They didn't have anything. They wanted it quick, let's get it paid over and done with. I sent them an invoice through my PayPal account. The money was paid and in my PayPal account 
by Monday the by that Monday. Uh, last week, excuse me, mid September, um, I, or late September, I got an email from PayPal. They were disputing the charges because, quote, they never authorized the transaction. I was able to pull my notes from my initial phone call, the email that they sent to me confirming the assignment, um, text messages showing that the guy said, oh, yes, here, I have your invoice. I will submit it to be paid. And I also sent a copy of the receipt from FedEx to PayPal. They said it might take up to 30 days. I heard back from them on Monday. They have uh, closed the case in favor of the buyer. Yeah. I thought I was covering myself by including the FedEx receipt with but that doesn't prove that the buyer got it. I do have it. I was able to get it online and my inside source at FedEx got me a little more information. Thank you very much, husband. And so I've got that ready, but I was just, I've got 10 days to appeal. I will be appealing. And if it still falls in favor of the buyer, I will be then talking with my legal shield, with the legal shield contact about taking them to small claims court. And I was just wondering if, you know, if maybe quick, or I can put my email in the chat if people want to get back with me that way. If anyone else has, with PayPal, been, uh, deal, has had to dealt with a dispute, has had it resolved against them, and then on appeal, it, that decision was reversed. Because right now I'm out the, the amount of the fee plus a $20 ding fee from PayPal. So thoughts, questions, like I said, I can put my email in the, in the chat box and people can get back with me that way rather than take up all day for this. Was this a loan signing or general notary work? It, what was notarized was a signature, affid, a name affidavit on a timeshare purchase. And who hired you? Uh, it was a company uh, out of Colorado, I believe. The address, the mailing address went to Colorado. Blue Green Vacations. The, their client received all of the paperwork in advance for them to look over, sign. There was only two documents that needed notarization, a name affidavit for the husband and for the wife. They had supposedly done timeshares before. They weren't, this wasn't their first rodeo. In fact, they were, had gone through like five or six iterations of this and were now at the very top tier of timeshare purchases that this company allows and really liked it. Um, I had thought of possibly contacting them to see if they've had any remorse, buyer's remorse and wanted out of it, but I figured I'm not gonna bring them into it until, unless it's absolutely necessary because right now this is between me and the company, not me. And Absolutely. Them. Yeah. And, and it wouldn't matter if they changed their mind or not. You fulfilled your duties they, that you were hired for. So you're absolutely do that. And I'm really surprised that that happened. I can't wait to hear the uh, comments in the chat. And then if you want to type your email address for somebody who might have a specific instance on here, definitely please do that. Yeah. Uh, the, these disputes, I, th I think, happen very, very rarely on this. It's always something that... Um, could possibly happen for consumer protection, but you've got all your backup. So I'm hoping that that does get reversed for you for sure. Yeah, the only thing is I, I have found that I'm starting to get, I, get, I don't wanna say lazy, but I'm slipping in my meticulous notes I'm taking because the initial phone call notes that I have, I know what it says. But if I were to give it to my husband to read, he'd have to say, what does this mean? You know, you've got this written in the, it's, right. it's notes to jot my memory. So I'm going to have to start taking clearer notes on that phone call or transcribing them to where they are crystal clear as that husband, you know, they said this, they said that. Um, the only other thing was I'm, because it was on a Friday night, they had the air bell scheduled for Saturday delivery. I did not, and I didn't think to use the scan app on my phone, did not have time to scan in any of the documents. So I have no, uh, I have no proof that I actually, that they actually signed off on the affidavit, which in the back of my mind sort of scares me. But um, I'll deal with that down that road. And if it comes up eventually that I do have to eat it, fine. Like I said, I'm going to be talking to Legal Shield then about taking it to small claims court because th this, 
<laughs> you know, it's not much money, but it's more the principle of the thing right now. Yep, totally yeah. agree. Totally agree. Sorry that happened. Let keep us posted on how it resolves. I sure will. All right. Thank you so much. Okay. Um, let's just do a quick welcome because I see Laura is in the house. Laura, thank you so much for being here. Thank you. Thanks for having me. Glad you made it. Glad I made it. All right. So all your general or specialty notary work questions. Off the hook. I tell you, I'm just as busy with that as I am loan signings. Speaking of that, what are you excited about this week? I'm excited that my son's house is recording tomorrow uh, for that refi that we signed for last week that took three months to get here for that 2.75% rate. So I'm just glad <laughs> that it's finally done. Uh, and um, I hope I don't need to refinance anything for a long time. So I'm excited it's done. Awesome. Awesome. Well, congratulations to you and your son. All right, let's jump into B. Alderson from Pennsylvania. Thank you so much for being here. How can we help? Oops. B. Alderson, you are on mute, so you have to unmute first. All right. Okay, now can you hear me? <laughs> yeah, sure can. Yes, my name's Bobby. And um, I'm 64 years old and I lost my job that I had for 27 years um, due to COVID. And I'm researching becoming a loan signing agent because I'm having trouble finding anyone else who's willing to hire someone at 64 years old at a decent pay rate. So my question that I'm wondering is, is how has COVID changed the way you go about doing loan signings. Are you finding people hesitant to have you come into their homes now? Are you doing more thing, more signings at like other places? And my second question is, um, have you ever gone in some place where you just didn't feel safe? And what did you do at that point? <laughs> did you ever go into like someone's home or someplace where you were supposed to do a loan signing, but you really weren't comfortable there? Yeah, great question, Bobby. Bobby, thank you so much for being here. And I know this particular situation that you find yourself in is a passion for all three of us, Laura, Carol, and myself. And I know Carol, Carol, are you still on? Do you have good internet? I'd love for you to speak to this and maybe first address Bobby's questions if you're here. Yes, I, I'm here if you can hear me. Yeah, we can hear you. Um, can you hear me okay? Yeah. yeah. Okay, good. All right, because it keeps flashing. Your internet's unstable. Well, I've got to tell you that most of our graduates are in their 50s, 60s, and 70s. I, I'm going to be 78 shortly. Oh, wow. And I understand what's going on. There's, there's terrible things happening to everybody, but most especially in this country today, the seniors are really taking the brunt of it. I right. have people that tell me the same story that you've said. They've been on their jobs for 25, 30 years, and they're being dismissed like a piece of garbage. Right. And maybe it's due to COVID, but this has been happening for the last few years. So I, I applaud you for thinking about getting starting a new entrepreneurial career. The people that we have uh, that are willing to work now, there's only about probably 25 to 30 percent maybe of my graduates that are actually actively working and they're all working out really well they've 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 got it down where they carry the supplies that they need to keep themselves safe they do some preliminary checking when they confirm the signings uh, when they can they're sitting sitting six feet apart outside on patios mm -hmm. uh, or going into homes and bringing the antiseptic wipes and masks and all of that kind of thing uh and we actually have people that talk are talking about and exchanging informations uh on a facebook group that we have so yeah they know what they're doing and and i know what you you're going through so just just do it and and know you'll keep yourself safe uh there's all kinds of things that you can do you all kinds of luck really because it's right what's happening 
Absolutely. You so, asked and, another question too. Oh yeah, if you don't feel safe. Yeah. Yeah, go ahead, Bill. No, no, I was just going to segue you right into that. Perfect. Did you want to say something, Bill? I was going to go right into oh, okay. the safety. So, go for yeah, it. now feeling, we've only, yeah, and, and over the, the 14 years that I did signings, uh, really I only had a couple times when I felt uncomfortable. I always tried to find out what kind of a neighborhood I was going into because there were neighborhoods uh, in, especially in Los Angeles County um, that I didn't want to go into, especially by myself and, and at night. Uh, I'm finding that most of our seniors really don't want to go out late at night anyway. They do most of their signings during the day. But if you do run into a situation like that, you can change that, that location. Uh, you can talk to the signing service or whoever hires you and say, I'm uncomfortable. I'm willing to do this. But Perhaps there is a McDonald's that's three blocks from their home, and and, and I never had a problem with it. Okay. People well, do understand. There is um, what I have so found I, too, Bobby. In that situation, is sometimes the the signer or the home buyer is actually grateful for that because they they they're uncomfortable having somebody in the house even before COVID. You know, they didn't have time to clean. Maybe they've got 12 cats, you know. Maybe they've got 18 people living in their house. And that, that's more of an inconvenience for us to come to their home. So when you offer it like that, sometimes they jump right on it and they're more appreciative of it. Okay. The other thing is, too, I also like to delineate when you're working loan signings versus specialty notary work. In loan signings, there's, there's no more than, no less than probably eight people that have an idea of, what time you're signing is they know that you're going to this house the loan officers involved the processor the hiring company all of that so there's this extra element of people knowing where you are and you can still take additional safety precautions on your own having um, somebody escort you there maybe they're waiting out in the car maybe you've got the uh, you've called somebody and said hey if you don't hear from me by this time call and check and I'll do a security check you know you can add all those personal safety measures on specialty notary work, where people are calling you from the general public, you don't have all those extra elements. You know, there's nobody, you're, anybody from the streets calling you. So I don't even take, I don't even go to homes anymore for specialty notary work. I ask to meet in a public place, a Starbucks, the McDonald's, all of those places. Some, and a lot of times it's just at a QT or a Circle K or whatever the gas stations are in your state. That's where we'll end up meeting. I'll sign on the on the trunk of my car, just for personal safety reasons as well. Right. Well, I guess with COVID though, for a while there it was hard because a lot, the restaurants and a lot of places were closed. That was that added an extra element for sure, and a lot of that has eased up a little bit. So now it's a little easier to find places for that. That's right. the other thing I wanted to throw on too. You know, when this all started happening in March, you know, doors were sealed. You know, we had drive-by signings. We have all this weird stuff happening, people trying to compensate for this. Now things have relaxed a little bit or people have found a way to make it work. The six feet apart, the uh, outdoor signings, and finally we're going into fall. So in most cities, not Phoenix, it's relatively uh, nice to do outdoor signings or garage signings and things like that. And real quick, before we move on, Laura, I just wanted to throw it over to you to see if you had any additional um, insight on this. I think both of you hit it pretty well. Um, there was, oh, so if I have a, a client, I do specialty notary work. I do go to people's homes or wherever it is they want me to meet them. I have not changed that procedure. Um, I do carry a portable table and stool in my car so that if I arrive and they say, uh, could we just stand here in my front porch? Yeah, standing is not going to work for me, uh, but I do have equipment that allows me to facilitate that. Sometimes they'll walk right up to my car and say, can we do it right here? Okay, let me pull out my table, let me pull out on the sidewalk, and I'll do it right there. So if it's their request, I'm prepared to not go in their home. And I would say probably 70% uh, uh, they still want me to go in their home and 30% they don't. Oh. So do any of you have offices where you offer them 
the option of coming to you? I do have an office, uh, but I do not uh, offer office uh, notarizations for one notarization. I only offer it for package situations like trusts, loan signings, where I'm gonna be doing, I'm getting paid by the package, not really by the notarization. And so, because otherwise you can't charge travel if it's your own office. I see, okay. Coming to you, so you're losing your money. So, mm -hmm. so I only use that for package deals. I see, okay. And there's a lot of, there are a growing number of notaries that actually do have the office option. So hopefully if you're on this call, guys, you can add that into the chat so Bobby can see that later. Bobby, welcome to this community. I hope you get some great information to make the best decision for you. And if there's anything else we can do to support you, please don't hesitate to reach out. Okay, well, by the way, I'm reading your book right now, so. Awesome, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> hope it helps. All it's, right. It's been very informative so far. All right, good, good, good deal. Thank you. Thank you again for being here. Uh, Athelonia Barksdale, thanks for being here. Tell us what state you're in and uh, what your question is. Good afternoon, everyone. Hello, Laura and Carol. Welcome back, Bill. You look refreshed. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> Feeling it. Awesome. So my question, I'm going to pull it up because I, I sent an email about it earlier. <laughs> So my question, I'm from Illinois. My name is Apollonia Barksdale. My question is regarding the particulars of the notarial certificate. Oftentimes in loan packages, I come across um, where the notarial cert might just say, subscribe and sworn on today and come to 2020, and then that's it. My question is, um, is it necessary or can you hand write in the names of the um, signer, or is it is it necessary, or, or is it even needed? And if it's not, is it assumed that notarizing that certificate is for the aforementioned or the above mentioned signature of that document? Great questions, and I know um, uh, Laura's dogs chimed in before she did, but <laughs> I'm gonna let her take that. Awesome, thank you. So I can tell you that's state specific. And if your state language does not include a place for the signer's name, then it's not required by your state. I okay. live in a state where I must fill in the name, uh, whether it's an acknowledgement or a jurat, I must name my signers. But there are states out there that do not include that in their certificate wording. So, if, so here's the thing is, if it's your own state and you know your wording, it's pretty easy. If it's, if it's not there, don't worry about it. If it's required in your state, but you've received an out-of-state certificate that does not name the signer, you need to replace that certificate with your own where you can name the signer. That's okay. what becomes so important to know your own state requirements. Okay. My state does not require it. I think I just uh, was just thinking... Um, as I'm reading and, and always, I'm always reading and just trying to stay on top of um, just educating myself. Um, it just, it stuck out at me for some odd reason yesterday. And I was just like, wait, should I, there's no names here. Should I? And just wanted to understand that if I, the notarial certificate is, is assumed that I'm notarizing for the signature above that certificate a hundred percent of the time. In states that don't require it, that is the assumption. Yes. Okay, perfect. Thank you so much for All taking right. my question. Yeah, thanks for being here. Glad to see you. <laughs> you too. All right. A Annie Lau, thanks for being here. Would you like to unmute? Tell us what state you're in and what's your question? Yes. Hi, everybody. My name is Annie. I'm from California. Um, I have been doing notary, uh, focusing on the loan signing agent area. Um, my question quickly, uh, if I can ask two questions quickly. The question one is for signing uh, loan signing um, journal entry. Are we in California, are we required to record each um, and each, uh, each signature we notarize uh, on the journal? Um, because I see a lot of notary, they just collect one signers one signature and one thumbprint and that's all I did for the whole set uh, but from the document I read uh, sorry from the N8 information I read um, they say that it's required for each signature for each uh, each notarized signature you do that's my question number one and question number two, two my understanding is when client uh, signers sign they're supposed to sign legible but a lot of clients they just sign whatever you know their original signature is and um, how do you is, is that a requirement that we ask them to sign 
negligibly? And if so, how do you uh, overcome that when they say, no, that's not my signature. I want to sign the way I sign. Thank you. That's excellent. And since Carol and Laura are both based in California, I'm going to, who wants to go first there, Carol, Laura? But Laura, because she's absolutely the expert. All right, Laura, take it away. I don't do signings anymore, so. So the easy one is their, their signature does not have to be legible. Whatever their legal signature is, it is, and that's how it is. And it is the unauthorized practice of law for a notary to try to force somebody to sign other than how they normally sign. The second uh, question about uh, entries Entry. in a journal, I, I think on my tombstone, it's going to say one entry per signer, per notarial act because I don't know how many places and how many ways we can continue to reinforce that is the appropriate way for California um, because notaries continue to say, oh no, that's not required. Uh, and they do one line entry and think they're all done. Uh, loan signings particularly, specialty work, I see people tend to spell things out. But for loan signings, it is never okay to get one signature, one thumbprint, one line entry, and think you are finished when you have five, six, seven documents that need to be notarized. Not only are you not complying with the law in California, and if you don't see it in your handbook, it's because the interpretation of what that means sits in the directives issued by the Secretary of State, who's empowered to create those interpretations and directives, and they're treated as law. And you'll find that in the newsletter that's on their website every year they put one out. So that's our proof of what it is we're supposed to be doing. Okay. Excellent. So Laura, yes. So Laura, you're saying one body per one grave? Yeah, that works. Is that on your tombstone? My tombstone. Yeah. <laughs> One body, one grave, <laughs> one document, one signature. That see escalated that. quickly. <laughs> I don't know. There was like six of them, but they were so, all acknowledgments. And just to clarify to you guys, uh, it is, I know it probably in your, in your mind, if you're in California and you don't do this already, you're thinking there's no possible way that they mean that two signers on every single document that I notarize has to sign the journal that many times. That is exactly what we're saying. It is that many journal entries. On there so that is the expectation there and then there was a follow-up question as well oh and for all the other states too guys remember uh, there is a journal video that Laura did uh, it is on the YouTube channel I'll send out the link to it uh, in the replay for this as well just to, as a refresher but as a general best practice the best practice is that we were if we would all do that because the reason that you do that is to protect yourself and to protect your signers. So if anything ever came back in court, you would have documented evidence of the documents that you notarized and did not notarize. So that's why we do it that way. Okay, and the follow-up question, Laura, do you remember what it is? Because I don't. Well, I already did it first and that was illegible signatures. Oh, perfect. <laughs> did that answer your question, Annie? Yes, thank you so much, Laura, I appreciate it. All right. Thank you so much for being here. We appreciate that. Let's now move to Linda with a Y. You have to, there, uh, Linda with a Y, you have to unmute I yourself. I did. I unmuted myself, but it, it brought something else up. Sorry about that. Hi, Bill. Hi, Carol. Hi, Laura. I think you guys just answered my question. So I went to go get my um, house refinance signed <clears throat> and the lady in her book, in her journal book, she only put down one signature for my husband and I. And I was thinking, why didn't she do the four or five that we signed the documents for? And then I think, Laura, you just answered that she was supposed to, because I'm going back and reviewing my um, journals now and I'm up to number four journal because I've been taking everybody's signature for everything they did and wanted to know am I doing something wrong because I'm up to four journals now and she only had one <laughs> I'm at yeah. 60 so okay oh okay journals, and you have to have a, a, a safe place to keep them all okay okay yeah, well that was the question I was like now 
honestly, I'm probably doing something wrong and I didn't understand Laura's video, but I guess I did. So I need to let her know about it. So my second question real quick is, what are the attributes? What are the things that we as notaries can do that other notaries don't do to make us stand out and above the other notaries because we care about our notary business? Excellent question. I'll jump in there with a couple ideas first. Um, do they start with cinnamon rolls? <laughs> everything starts with cinnamon rolls. <laughs> <laughs> um, so I think the, the, the number one thing um, is to keep the big picture in mind. And when I say that, I know I say the same things a lot, but it means that it's a uh, it's common sense, but it's not common practice. We got to stay in touch with people. You have to treat them more than the transaction. This is a really, the single most relationship business I have ever worked in in my life, and I've worked in a lot. Going above, sending cards above and beyond, thinking win win, taking a hit every now and then, not getting angry about it. That level, like crossing the line of professionalism and, um, almost that friend level. Like, this is what I would do for a family. This is what I would do for a friend. When you start doing that kind of stuff for your client, it really stands out and they are not used to it because most people, and it's not just notaries, it's really anywhere you go, people are trained to think transactionally. So all they think about is, oh, this is my $65 paycheck. This is my $90 paycheck. This is my $150 paycheck. Start thinking like, more than just a paycheck. Think, be thinking about how you are adding value to that person's life because every one of our customers has their own dreams. They're trying to hit their own income goals. They're trying to hit their own lifestyle goals. They've got their family they're trying to take care of too. And when you become part of that energy, that dynamic, that team that helps them accomplish their dreams, yours are going to come along with it. That small thing is huge in this business. Carol, Laura, do you have anything that you would suggest? Yeah, I, I, it, it, I, I agree with everything you said, but you know, the, I, I'll tell you a key that I have been t teaching my graduates for a long time now, uh, especially when you're dealing with your client, when you're going out and doing signings and everything, you, you need to be your authentic self. People read you immediately. I tell my graduates the most important, all, walking them through the, to the door to all of the information that I give them to get there, the biggest thing is be yourself. Uh, I'm going to point out an example. I had a, a, a fellow from Texas and he called me up, signed up, is like, hey, Miss Carol, you know, that accent. And we talked. He wanted a mentor, you know, talk about it. And I said, so what is it that you want to portray? What is it that you're trying to get to? He says, I just want to be a, a professional, Miss Carol. And I said, listen, you know what? You are a delightful person. You have a great personality. And if you're just trying to be strictly professional, that briefcase carrying kind of person, people are going to know right away it is not that person that you really are so just be yourself and if you if you are your authentic self really you're out there to they'll know it it's, what is that oh, we got some background music Let me anyway get that's Sandra just my my take yeah I love that, Carol. Thank you for sharing that. Authenticity is a, is a I lot. I can all mute of this everybody. Kind of, you want me to mute everybody? I think we got her. Thank and you guys she so mutes much. Me too. Okay. <laughs> I've Linda. just muted everybody. <laughs> Laura, did you have anything you wanted to add to that? Because this is huge. It is huge. Um, and I think you and Carol hit a couple of the really important points. Um, I think also, for me anyways, this idea of identifying what this is really about for myself as well as the people I serve, uh, I think is really important and will help you um, uh, take your path, whatever that path is. Uh, and that may lead you down the path of saying, you know, these are the clients I'm looking to work with. These are the kinds of jobs I'm looking to handle. These are the kind of signers I'd like to 
to take care of. Um, and this is how I'd like to see my brand, my business grow. Um, and you do that by uh, thinking about what you would love uh, and how you would love to be seen and how you would like to operate. Uh, and that comes from within. That doesn't come from looking at how other people do it. Um, it's not something you get from the outside. You got to turn it on from the inside uh, because that's where the authenticity comes. That's it. Huge. Great. Linda, thank you so much for asking that. That's a super deep question. And that's the stuff that really matters on here too. Now, I also want to just readdress um, what Annie asked and what Linda asked about the journals. You know, there's so many notaries that just do the single line journal entry for loan signings and things like that. That's, if we're really honest about it, that's the common practice. That's what most people do. It's just not compliant in most states. And that leaves you very vulnerable to stuff down the road. And the challenge that we have as mobile notaries and loan signing agents is we never know that there's a problem until there's a problem. Nobody goes through our journal and says, oh, great job. Gold star on that one. Gold star on that one. You did good. It doesn't happen that way. It just, whoops, I get a letter in the mail or a, a detective is on the phone trying to investigate something. That's how it happens. So just keep that in mind. You have to have your own sense of integrity on this. And you always, 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 and I just wrote a blog article about this, when you're getting advice, when you're taking advice, make sure you're taking advice from somebody who has results that you wanna emulate and that they have the same values that you do as well and that they're in the, they're, they have the same mission because we're all in this for different reasons. And you might get advice from somebody who just wants to take two signings a week and doesn't want to stay in touch with people. But you might, that's not the person you want to take advice about growing your business from. You want to take advice from somebody who wants to grow their business too or has grown their business as well. Okay, let's uh, get to, how are we doing on time? We got 13 more minutes. Let's do Casey. Thank you so much for being here. Would you like to unmute, tell us what state you're from and ask your question. Hi, Bill, it's Katrina. I am from oh. Dallas, Texas. All How right. you doing? Hi, Excellent. Carol. Hi, Laura. Nice um, to see you. What's going on? Um, so my question is, I attended a training with uh, Ms. Carol. Ms. Carol, I forgot the man's name that we were with, but I think his name was Matt. And he made a suggestion, I mean, he made the uh, comment that, um, some of the signing agencies are not choosing people that are signing up as a business over being an individual because he said that, you know, we all have to turn in our credentials and stuff when we sign in with signing agencies and they don't know who all they're getting. What is your take on that? Because, of course, I do have um, a business set up, Admin Mobile, and um I've been signing up as Admin Mobile, not as Katrina. So what are your thoughts about signing up with those companies as a business over being an individual? Great question. Uh, Carol, have you heard any feedback from your graduates on this? Any challenges there? Hold on, she's I'm sorry, I'm muting. Uh, no, I, I get this question all of the time because people think that they need to create a business name, that they need to do an LLC. They need to get, first of all, tax advice. They have to go to professionals when it comes to setting up their accounting and all that kind of stuff. But basically what I tell them is that for 14 years, uh, I worked in, under my own name. However, my, my identification was I signed docs. That was my domain name, and that's what I used. But when I got paid, I got paid Carol Ray. Never took a, a company check, and until I created Notary to Pro and you know incorporated it, uh, I always worked as an individual. So if they're setting up a business account, there's I've, I don't see any problem in putting it that way with the signing service, as long as they understand outsourcing the signings without letting the signing service or title company know that they're doing that. Um, but that's, that's my take on it. I think that working as an individual, most of my graduates, that's what they do. Set up a domain name and that's all they need to do. 
I have not heard that um, signing up as an LLC or any type of business has presented a challenge. Um, as long as it's clear, I would all, always include your own personal name too, because you're developing a relationship. Um, and I think they need to know who's going out on the signings. So I think I've, if anything, I would put my name and you know make the checks out to MM signings or whatever it might be. But my, here's my name. I'm Katrina. Katrina, you know. Um, I don't. I have not heard, and I don't have any evidence, and I don't see a whole bunch of comments about it here that there's a trend in the industry for that. So it might be one particular company. It might be a couple companies. I don't know. Things could be shifting too. So we count on you to keep us posted on that as well. Okay, thank you guys. I appreciate it. Anytime. Thanks for being here. Um, All right, let's see what we got here. Lori Woods. And Bill, I know we're getting oh. close. I do have. I... Sorry, go ahead. Carol, what'd you say? Oh, Bill, I'm so, Yeah, I'm sorry. Before we leave, though, I have to make kind of an important announcement. Um, just before we leave, I just wanted to let you know. Do you have a 10 minute announcement or a three minute announcement? Can you hear me? Yes. No, no, no. Just a couple quickie announcement. All right. Excellent. Thank you. I'll make sure that happens. Okay. You want me to say it? Yeah, go ahead. Just do it right okay. now. Lori, Lori will jump right into you in a second here. All right. Okay. Go for it, Carol. Oh, all right. Okay. We introduced... Uh, last time we introduced David Fleck, who's the CEO of Veritable Data Solutions. Uh, I don't know how many of the people on this uh, program right now have signed up to test this program. <coughs> Excuse me, that, uh, that software that protects against fraud. Uh, but I do want you to know we had somebody that reported to us. Uh, actually, it was Carrie Rivera. I think she's on here. Uh, said that there was a problem that they were wanting us to stamp or put our notary stamp on a piece of paper. Uh, and so I wanted everybody to know that I did address it right away with David. And uh, he has taken the steps to within two days, that requirement is going to be completely taken off of there. Uh, he said that this was something that nobody would have access to except if there was fraud uh, against that notary that they would be able to do, they do a subpoena, court subpoena to see it. In the meantime, for any of those of you who are testing the app, he wants to know if there's any little thing that's bad with it. That's why we're testing it. If you have any problems with it, let them know. And when it comes to taking the picture for just the next couple of days until they remove that requirement, Take a picture of anything, coffee cup, your thumb, your nose, whatever you want. Nobody will ever see it. So if it's funny, you can go back later and laugh. So that's the only thing I just want to let him know. Excellent. I'm glad he's open to such uh, intense feedback on that and fixed it so quickly. Great. Thank you. Okay. Let's jump over to Lori Woods. Thank you for your patience, Lori. Mm -hmm. What's going on? What state are you in and how can we help? Sure. Thank you. Um, Hello, everyone. So I'm originally from Ohio. I, re I recently moved from Greater Cleveland, Cuyahoga County to Austin, Texas, Williamson County. I held commission in Ohio, and I am in the process of obtaining my commission here in Texas. So I just wanted some suggestions, tips, insight on um, doing like a big move like that from one state to the next. Um, any tips, tricks? suggestions advice that i could get would be great yeah i love that first of all well, i would currently love anybody I'm in the i'm sorry, I'm sorry. Sarah, currently i'll be holding two commissions because my commission in ohio doesn't expire until 2021 and the new commission in texas will be through 2024 so i don't think okay. i'll be doing any back and forth but i just any, again any suggestions definitely okay great uh, and I want to open this up to all of our participants wow. out here, too, that is going through the same thing. If you have any suggestions, please load up the chat window. And remember, Laura, you can save the chat at the end of the call, and I'll remind everybody again, hopefully. Uh, but first, Carol, have you, you have some suggestions on this, too, right? On how to move states? Well, first 
first of all, oh boy, <laughs> it's not easy. You. And I'm coming to Texas too. <laughs> okay, you can? Okay. Anyway, um, you know what? You, you can't have two commissions running at the, uh, the same time. Uh, Laura is more of an expert than I am, but I believe that you're going to have to give up your commission uh, out of Ohio. And uh, you can't let it run, I don't believe, until the extension, uh, until the end of it. And then by the time that you get the Texas one, there's going to be a little lapse in there. But Laura, I don't know about, uh, I don't know about their state but I think you probably know more than I do. Yeah. Well, I think my state, there are some states that Can allow- Can you hear border. me, Laura? Yeah. There are some states that are bordering states that allow for more than one commission or a dual commission. However, typically it is not from one side of the country to the other. They're usually in proximity to each other, number one. But how you would find out is you need to read the requirements for holding a commission in the state you're leaving to see if residency is a requirement. If residency is a requirement and you have left that state, you must resign your commission. That's really the basic uh, premise there. Okay. Now, let's Just talk about- you rescind your, your notary license from the other state before they will give you your Texas license. Because I moved from Arizona to Texas and, and they made me rescind Arizona. There you go. Yeah, California doesn't share well either. So there are states that say, you know what, you need to resign that before you can have this. Okay, that's good to know. And so and it then, won't match. It won't matter. Be, I'm sorry. I, I was okay. going to say it doesn't really matter because you can't you can't do a notarization in Texas or I mean until you can't do it in. Arizona anymore, so it doesn't matter whether you have your commission or not. <laughs> right? So I think, too, um, it reg uh, regardless of that little detail, because it doesn't sound like you're going to go to Ohio anyway, you've already got your Texas notary commission, so we're already there. Yeah. How about some, is there any suggestions for a notary who maybe had a really great business going in one state and then uproots and goes to a new state? Do you have any suggestions on how to get started again, Carol? Yes, I do. Because it happened to me when I was in California years and years ago and I moved to Arizona. I like, I didn't know how I was going to get business. I had developed all these relationships with companies in California and I thought, well, I'm moving to Arizona now. They're, they're gone. So uh, I signed up with First American Title at, when they had their signing service right at the beginning and uh, did that for about three months. It was horrible. But then all of a sudden I started getting calls from all these companies because they were working all over the country. So just keep in touch. Let people know that you're moving and where you're going to and, mm -hmm. and do it as soon as you're able to work. You'll let them know I've got my commission and I'm ready to go. They'll follow you. Mm -hmm. Yeah, when you're working with title or signing companies, Lori, it, 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 it's a way easier because all of those companies you've been working with in Ohio, they do business in all 50 states and most, like, most likely. So all you have to do is call them and let them know, let them know your new address, your new zip code, your new radius. You know, Texas is, depending on where you are versus Ohio, it's way bigger. You know, neighbors are a couple hundred miles apart sometimes. So just let them know what that is and that, sh that will <laughs> definitely help out. And here's what we also hear about Austin in particular. Austin is craving good quality signing agents that can be counted on. So if you can build relationships, if you were escrow direct in Ohio, then I highly recommend you step right into escrow direct in Austin as well. Austin or Texas has some different rules with cash out refinances and things like that. So you want to get right up to speed with the state laws. Remember guys, we gotta be, we have to be the expert in our states. So you gotta know those laws, you gotta know what the rules are. If you're gonna be a mobile notary and loan signing agent in Texas, you're gonna wanna develop relationships with title companies, lenders, and lawyers, so you can do those cash out refinances. There's a lot of nuance there. So get dialed into that Texas community as well. Okay, thank you so much.
You're very welcome. Our Thank Texas so graduates are doing amazing. Yep. It's booming. Good time to be in this business. Guys, yeah, our Texas us, graduates are doing great. That brings us right up to the, uh, the one hour mark. Guys, I've missed you so much. Thank you for making this fun for me as well. Laura, Carol, thank you again for being here for everybody. Uh, don't forget, if you want to save the chat, guys, you can save the chat. I know there's some, sounds like there's some chatter about Android and iPhone and all that. I wish I could help you out with that, but I am not the tech guy for sure. But if you are on a computer, in the lower right-hand corner, if you've opened the chat, there's three little dots. You click that, and there's a save chat feature right above it. And you can save your chat and reference it anytime you want. Guys, thank you so much for growing yourself and your business on the Tuesday. We'll see you the same time, same place next week. But remember, it will be a different link. So check your email and change your email calendar links because Zoom changed their up, changed their security settings. So this admitting everybody uh, is probably not going to work for us. So we're going to fix that starting next week. All right, guys. We'll see you later. Thanks, everybody. Bye-bye. Ciao. Bye. Bye-bye, everybody. Laura, I'm calling you. Bye, everyone. Bye, everyone. Thank you. Carol, where are you moving to in Bye, Texas? Thank you. A little town called Mathis outside of uh, Corpus Christi. Oh, we're going to welcome you. I'm down here with uh, Phyllis. I know. We'll welcome you to Texas. <laughs> we'll see ya. Okay. Well, goodbye, everybody. Bye, Carol. Thank you. Okay. I'm trying to pick. Bye. Okay. And Thank here we go. Carol. Thank you for oh. all that you do. Bye bye. Have a good wait. <laughs> You're welcome. Oh, I'm trying to end this. <laughs> I can't remember.